Hi everybody, good morning, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching me from or whatever time of day it is. My name is Sally Roper and I'm coming to you from Ocho Rios in Jamaica. And right now I'm enjoying a little bit of what we call liquid sunshine. It is actually raining. Well, it's a very light drizzle, but if you can see in the window behind me, the sun is out. So go figure, it's typical uh, down here in the tropics and we call it liquid sunshine. So um, no further ado, I'm gonna get on with why I'm doing today's video. Behind me, you see two kilns. I have my old kiln, which has the uh, touch controller pad, and then I have my new kiln, which has the uh, electronic controller pad. I, I love my new kiln, they're Scott kilns, uh, 1027s, and I, they're perfect for, um, for my home studio use. And I have a commission job that I have to get these pieces out of the kiln. They're being delivered tomorrow. And earlier last week, I actually posted something to this private group that I'm a member of, and it's called Clayshare Prime. For those of you that are not members or don't know about Clayshare, Clayshare is a, is a, um, a group of potters it's thousands of uh, thousands of numbers um and then there is a private branch uh, called clayshare prime of which i pay a hundred dollars a year to be a member of well worth it the information and what i have learned from uh, not only the creators of the company jessica and kevin phillips um is also inundated with tremendous information from all the potters that are actively um, uh, contributing, that's a good word, actively contributing to this site. Anyway, I posted on there that last week I did these jugs that had a company logo on them. The logo is blue with a white background. So what I thought I would do is scraffito, which means that I would carve into my pot um, and then I would um, put some blue underglaze in, in the recess of what I've carved. That worked out perfect and everything was wonderful. The mistake I made was that I used some white, uh, white glaze over top of that, thinking that the blue would burn through. It didn't. Um, and I had 18 jugs for this company and I was mortified. Um, I, didn't, I, did, I didn't video it because of, um, I guess the personal shame, it didn't come up to my standard. And this happens in pottery. Uh, it just hasn't happened to me before. But anyway, I took the jugs to the, uh, to the customer and uh, they were okay with them. Um, and I really do appreciate that. So learning from your mistakes, I had a second part of their order left to do, which I glazed yesterday and, and they, they're sitting in the kiln. And the reason why I have both kilns going is because not the number of pieces, it's just the size. I have these large bowls and I couldn't fit the large bowls and some jugs into the one kiln. And fortunately I have two kilns. This is my old kiln, which I rarely use anymore because my new one is working out so well. Anyway, here goes, I'm going to open them up and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, about what went wrong last week and hopefully what is going right this week. Now I haven't had a look and I'm a little scared, but um, anyway, let's, let's have at it. So I do keep notes of all of my firings. Um, I just do um, the type of firing I do, the cone I do, the speed I do, and then just whatever notes and I come and check it periodically on the time. I don't have to do it so much with this one because I can do it on my phone or on my computer because it has Wi-Fi services on it. But, um, but my manual kiln, I definitely, every hour I come out and I record what the temperature is and make sure and check on it. It is not vented, which, which is also um, another difference from me. So what I did was I fired it um, with the lid propped with this um, four inch prop and all the plugs except for the top one. And uh, I fired it like that up to about 600 degrees. Then I dropped the lid, left the top peephole open. There you go, the top peephole was open. Um, and then I fired it to its final temperature. 
And then what I did was when it was finished, I just put the top, um, the top plug into the kiln just to slow down the cooling a little bit and give the glaze time to react and relax as it goes through the cooling process. So, um, so there you have it. So let's get this kiln unloaded. And um, so I don't have my glaze notes. Sorry, it, it really is warm. I'm going to turn the fan. I have a fan here. And I think I need to have it blowing on me a little more directly because I'm pretty warm. <laughs> All right, that's better. All right, so this is, uh, this is a jug and oh my God, what a difference. So I'm going to cover up a little bit of the logo because I don't think it's fair to the people um, who I have the commission with. But anyway, you can see here that what I did was exactly the same. I traced the logo into the into the piece and then I carved it out. I put on uh, wax. Uh, I put on wax first, then I carved it and then I put in the blue underglaze and then I bisque fired it. Um, then what I did was I painted some clear glaze over the logo and then I waxed the clear glaze because I didn't want any of the color of the glaze for the jug to go into the into the um, into the logo. I hope I'm kind of blocking it up enough that you can't read it. I don't think it'd be fair to the people. But anyway, and they they came out great. Uh, it, it's just so much better. Like I said, when I did it with the white, because I believe it's because the um, uh, because the under glaze is recessed into the jug, when I put on the white glaze over top, it 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 just wasn't it raised enough. The blue wasn't raised enough to burn through the white to to make it work. And I'm sorry that I didn't keep a, a copy of it or a picture of it. But anyway, this is uh, this is the jug. Now, this uh, colors are what they chose and what they like. But this is um, opulence. Uh, sea spray and it's come out really nice. I was having trouble with it a while back but I mixed in new glaze and I gave it um, probably the correct specific gravity and now I'm not having any trouble. I'm getting back this beautiful beautiful green. Um, it, it's, a, it's a reduction look glaze. So this is going to be a little rep repetitive. Uh, really what I just wanted to share with you were my glaze combinations. So again, the, um, the, uh, the logo came out great. Uh, I'm just really, really, really pleased. So uh, I covered this one with, with clear as opposed to white and it's come out just exactly what they wanted. Um, anyway, on the outside, what I did was I dipped the jug all the way up to here in black and once the uh, sheen had gone, uh, or the gloss of the glaze had gone, I poured the sea spray on the inside, and then I turned it upside down, and I dipped the sea spray down to here. Uh, held it for a couple seconds, and then brought it out. And then you get this beautiful blue. It's My camera is not picking it up very well, but you can see it more up top. So the green on top of the black gives me this beautiful, beautiful blue. Anyway, that's a, that's a nice looking jug. These jugs are four, eight, remember my hands are four inches tall. These jugs are 10 inches tall. All right, again, this is another one um, with the opulence um, uh, black and uh, sea spray. And then this blue is the overlap, but they came out, they came out pretty nice. It was my decision to make all of the jugs a little bit different. Okay, and here's here's uh, one with uh, with sea spray, um, and then what I did was I just t turned it upside down and I dipped the rim only about one inch into some blue Monday, held it there for a couple of seconds, and this is what you get. But this is what happens to sea spray when it's almost a little too thin. What I did is because of the height of this jug, I had to dip it into there. I held it for a few seconds and then I turned it upside down and I dipped it 
up back up to here and I mustn't have held it in for the, the same amount of time because it's just a little yellow, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just say it was intentional. <laughs> All right. Now this is, uh, again, the logo came out perfect. Uh, it just came out perfect. So you can see, you can see the uh, white. This time I use clear glaze, opulence clear 125. The colors didn't run. I'm really, really pleased. And this is with Opulence Blue Monday. Again, I dipped it to here, and then I turned it upside down, and I, I dipped it um, to meet because my um, dipping bucket wasn't tall enough. Again, these are 10-inch tall jugs. All right. Another one of this Sea Spray and Black, giving me the tri-color. I'm just whipping through these because it does get a little bit repetitive. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I believe that these ones, this one, I dipped it into sea spray all the way up to here. And then I poured sea spray on the inside and then I dipped it all the way in, in the blue Monday down to here. And uh, I like the combination. Again, this is almost triple color using two glazes. And the, uh, lo the logo, the logo came out really, really nice. Um, there you can you can see how nice it came out all right and this is um, just a lamp that I did it's been sitting around I thought I would fire it because I had the other tall pieces and what I will do is put fairy lights or a candle in the bottom I have a tray that this will sit on if you want to use a candle it will catch the drips but it's just kind of a design I, I played around with punching in a bunch of different size holes and this also, one, four, eight, this is also uh, almost 10 inches tall. And make a nice centerpiece on somebody's dining room table. Okay. So here are my witness cones. Um, I fired it to uh, cone five. I did it at medium speed and, um, and then I held it for 12 minutes. So it almost gave me probably a little more than five and a half. You can see this is the five cone that is totally bent over and touching the, uh, touching the, um, the stand that I put it on. And then this is a cone six, which is almost, if it had uh, bent over just another half an inch or so, it would have reached a perfect cone six. But uh, I'm using B-Mix five and I'm using opulence uh, reduction look uh, glazes. So I, um, I wanted to fire them to cone five. Okay. So this is, um, this is the test for me and I can see it and you can't um, for what I did. Again, I did, um, I carved some cephalopods into the inside of the of the bowl. Oh gosh, that came out so nice. Um, let me show you the inside. Uh, I'm not going to show it all to you because I have the logo on the bottom of the pot. But what I did was I drew those inside. I bisque fired. No, I, uh, I traced them and then I, um, I waxed the inside. Then I carved the design and then I bisque fired them. No, I didn't do that either. Sorry, I'm really messing this up. Okay, what I did was I traced it onto the side of the, of the bowl, and then I put wax on the, over the whole inside of the bowl, and then I carved through the, through the wax and, and into a little bit uh, like scraffito, and then, in, and then I let it sit for a couple of days, and then what I did was using velvet underglazes. Uh, there's reds, blues, greens, chartreuse, purples. I have all kinds, oranges. Um, and then I, I painted the inside um, uh, or painted where I had carved. And then I wiped it back with a sponge and the uh, underglaze stayed inside. Now I've also fired this with clear. I brushed clear on on the inside. And then I turned it over and I put it over a bucket that was wider than the rim of my bowl. 
and I had it sitting on a um, uh, sitting on another bucket um, so that it would raise it raise it up enough uh, and then I poured black glaze all over the bottom and then up to there I let that dry a little bit and then I took my sea spray and I poured it on the outside these came out really really nice and I'm really really happy with them and so I have all the all the designs on the inside and the company logo on the floor of the bowl um, I had struggled uh, with that one in the past and I was afraid that the um, the clear glaze might make the underglaze run a little bit and it didn't. It's really, really, really sharp. So this is Opulence 125 Clear. I'm not 100% sure if it's zinc free or not, but I took a chance and I won this one. Um, and like I said, I just because these are big I only have one but this is a this is the same thing um, this is opulence black and then this is eggshell opulence eggshell I poured around the outside so it's just giving it a little bit of a, a different look and a different texture and then this is the inside all done the same way remember I carved I waxed it carved it colored it bisque fired it glazed it with clear glaze and then fired it again yesterday up to 2167. So that came out great. And then I have room for a couple of other pieces and these turned out really nice. These are some little small luminaries um, that I made for somebody and I managed to get them in this firing and this is with Jess's Chun Blue available through um, Clay Scapes Pottery. Uh, you can buy Jessica's glaze. And um, anyway, this is uh, really, really pretty. It's her Chun Blue. A very thick glaze when you apply it, but it just comes out and and uh, is beautiful. Anyway, I have um, three of these to complete an order that I did the other day for another client. I'm really happy with how those turned out. And that's the end of that kiln. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide over um, and then we'll go to the other kiln there's really not a whole lot in this other kiln okay okay so all right this is uh, another one of the big bowls again with the designs on the inside uh, they came out great and this was a, a different firing so it wasn't a mistake or or whatever and this is sea spray and you can just see the beauty of this glaze. It's, it's a beautiful glaze. It's a reduction look glaze, which you can electric fire to. I do it to cone five with just a regular cooling. I did it, ah uh, yes, and I did a 12 minute hold. And these are my witness cones. Did exactly the same program. And funny enough, Doing two different kilns, they've come out exactly the same. So there's nothing wrong with my old kiln or the way in which I did it. And that was, again, I propped the lid four inches, uh, sorry, four inches up to 600 degrees. In fact, it went up to 700 degrees by the time I got to it. And then um, I had all, all the plugs in except for the top one. And I left the top one out for the duration of the firing. And only when it was finished, I put the top plug in just to help it cool a little bit slower. I had a little bit of room because I only had a couple of bowls. So I just took some plates that were around and this is with Sky um, Celadon and this is with a uh, rolling pin um, texture and this is the back. And um, unfortunately, it's a little dark where I have the overlap, but I'll just tell the people that that was intentional. But because again, this is for a, not about 10 inches long, I didn't, the pot wasn't deep enough. I suppose I could have poured it and, and uh, brushed it on and whatever, but I chose to dip it. I, I like dipping. Um, and then there's my name on the back. Sally, and now I put Jamaica and the year that I made the piece. Again, 
I have advancer shelves if you if you can ever find a way to afford them. Well worth it. Okay. Another bowl, and I see something that I like in there. Okay, another bowl. Sea spray on the outside. Uh, same process. They came out really, really well. So these are cephalopods, and you can see the a little bit of the logo on the bottom of the of the pod. I don't think the colors match actually what the cephalopods really are supposed to look like, but that didn't matter to me. I think they all like them because they're colorful. Sea spray on the back. One more bowl in there. Okay, so I made these. Um, I made these mug toppers. Uh, this one I did in, in um, Weeping Plum uh, Amico. I just dipped it. I left the bottom unglazed so I could sit it on the on the kiln. But I love the way the texture thro shows through in the celadon glazes. There, let me get the glare out. Anyway, that's really nice. And then this one is also done with Sky. And this is um, Sharon Hoppy's designs. It's her rolling pin with the hummingbirds and hibiscus. And, you know, I watched um, Clay Share Con, which again, the Phillips um, did in back in February. It was five days of free um, pottery tutorials and lessons and things. And one of the people they introduced was, uh, was a woman uh, named Paula McCoy and she does colors for earth and um, like probably everybody else you see these things and you buy them and then I just haven't used them until this week so what I did was I took this same the same same design and I I painted it um, I used her colors for earth I can't tell you what the colors are but I have a red hibiscus, a cranberry flower, and I have a blue hummingbird and green on the, uh, on the leaves. And then I just outlined it with, um, with black underglaze. And then I just dipped, uh, I just dipped the, there um, into, into clear. So I'm really pleased with how that turned out. And this is a, a mug topper, so it'll just sit really pretty I think I might keep this one for myself because it's the first one I've done using the Colors for Earth um, colors. And I'm really happy. So thank you very much, Paula, for, uh, for that, if you ever see this video. Okay, down to the last. last bowl again it came out really nice sea spray black I poured upside down I poured black all around the outside and then when it once the gloss or the sheen had gone off I poured the sea spray very carefully holding it at a certain level and it uh, it went down the pot beautiful and again the colors the colorful cephalopods on the inside so that was a hundred percent success and my last piece is another uh, tray that I had. Um, same design as what you saw that I did the Colors for Earth on. Anyway, that's it. So I want to thank you all. <coughs> Sorry about that. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video or you have any comments, please feel free to hit the like button. Please feel free to leave a comment. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you're welcome to subscribe or not. That's your decision and I, it won't affect me one way or the other. I enjoy um, doing the kiln openings. And um, so this time you got a two for, two for one, even though the number of, um, of pieces isn't very grand, um, it had to be done. And uh, they'll be delivered tomorrow to, to my client who will be very happy with them. So thank you all very much for watching and uh, have a really wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now.